Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you have your Bible, please turn into James. James in the New Testament, towards the end of your Bible. James chapter 1, from verse 13. Let's read James chapter 1, from verse 13. I want to bring you a very simple message. I won't preach long today. It's a very simple, but yet a very powerful message. Amen. A very simple, but yet very powerful message. I believe God is going to use this message to change your life. It is a teaching, not a preaching. It's a teaching. I want you to get the, 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 the center piece of this message. So I'll go slowly, and I want to make sure God does something in your life as you listen to this message amen james chapter one the epistle of james in the in the new testament it's in the new testament towards the end of your bible after hebrew you see james james chapter one um from verse 13 i read let no man say when he is tempted i am tempted of god for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he no, no man. Let me read that again. Verse 13, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he no man. Verse 14, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own loss and enticed. Verse 15, then when lust has conceived, he brings forth sin, and sin, when it's finished, bring forth death. Verse 16, do not err, my beloved brethren. Do not err, my beloved brethren. I want to focus on this passage and bring you a message titled, How did I get here? How did I get here? Hallelujah. How did I get here? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that your power comes on us right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that your spirit will guide us in your truth, in your word, so we can minister life to everybody listening to your word. Lord, pranking everybody listening to this message to invite the friend to come and share your word and let life that is in your word be communicated to them and the purpose of this passage uh, that we just read to your people lord let the purpose be accomplished in their life and use this passage to change their life let your power be eminent in their life whatever they are either they are watching this video on on youtube or on facebook or or in a regular DVD or whatever they are listening to this message. Let your power be manifested and change life for the preaching of your word. It's not just by simple pronunciation, but in power. Lord, do it for, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. How did I get here? My goodness, how did I get here? The passage I just read to you, my friends, is talking about sin, how sin arrived in our life. And the, the title of this message, How Did I Get Here, it has been chosen strategically because many times when we, we, we find sin in our life, we begin to behave as if we are surprised pertaining to how this sin has arrived in our life. Many people, when they mess up and they sin against God, they, 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 use, they seem to have this surprise in their face or in their life and say, what have happened to me? And they seem to behave as if sin just fall from the sky or sin has just arrived. And plainly, they have not planned to sin, or somehow sin just got all of them at a surprise. And they, 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 they look at sin as if sin is a strange thing, but 
through the passage we are about to read together, my friend, you're going to understand how you and I, we end up sinning against God. I don't know who you are watching this day. Maybe you go to church or you don't go to church, but let me tell you that if you know about God or you know about Jesus Christ, the main reason why Jesus came into this world is to save you and to save me from sin. I know many people are confused uh, as to why Jesus came in this world, but the Bible said in Matthew chapter 1 verse 21, that was even before Jesus was conceived. Uh, that was before Jesus came into this world. When Jesus was conceived in the belly of Mary, the angel of God said the goal of Jesus in coming into this world. That goal is to save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 said, Talking about Jesus, before Jesus was born, the angel of God that came to pro to prophesy about Jesus that will be born said Jesus will save his people from their sins. And you and I know that through Jesus, all people, not just his people, meaning the Israelite or the Jew people, no, but all people, all nation of the earth became the people of Jesus. And why did he come? He didn't come to create love in the world. He didn't come to, to, to vanish poverty in the world. He didn't come to do miracle in the world. He didn't come to heal the sick, but the main purpose why Jesus came to save his people from their sins. Of course, all those things that are I just mentioned, healing people and feeding people and, and bring and doing whatever that is good. Jesus did those things, but don't be confused to think that Jesus came to just love people and to do miracles because he came. To save people from sin. That's the main purpose. And of course when we mention main purpose. That means there are secondary purpose. There are secondary purposes. But sin. To save his people from the sin. That's a main purpose. The angel didn't say he shall, he shall heal people. He shall do this and do that. Because those are secondary the main idea of Jesus coming into this world is to save people from sin. And we know if you ever read the Bible at all, even those who are not even Christians, those who are Muslim or whatever, they know something about sin. Your other religion, Buddha, whatever, they know something about evil doing. That's why they do sacrifice. That's why they do Allah, Kubaru, or whatever. Even though we know that Jesus is the way. Jesus is the truth and the life. Only through Jesus that we can get to the Father, the Almighty God, the Creator of heaven and earth. Jesus is the answer. I don't want to get away from the subject. How did I get here? But I want to let you understand that Jesus came into this world to save us from our sins. That's the main purpose of why Jesus came and died. Because the Bible says without remission of sin, without, uh, without the shell of blood, there's no remission of sin. There's no remission of sin without a shed of blood. That's why Jesus came and died for us. I don't want to get into that. I'm just making sure you understand that dealing with sin had to be very primary in your life. What to do to avoid sin, to get away from sin, to be saved from sin, have to be the main goal of your life. And I know the reason why God has called us to be on the airways and to be bringing you the word of God is because many people are not hearing the truth of the word of God anymore. Many churches are just camouflaging the word of God. Many churches are afraid to tell people the truth that can save their soul. But let me tell you, as long as God gives us the opportunity to bring the word of God to you, we're going to tell you what is in the Bible. Because we love you, because we want you to be good wherever you are, either in Africa, either in Europe, in America, 
in Asia, wherever you are, whatever the color of your skin is, we want you to save your soul. We want you to be connected to Jesus Christ and be able to deliver yourself from eternal fire, to deliver yourself from eternal damnation. We're going to bring you the one that can save your soul. You don't have to worry about us uh, coming hypocritically to you or, or coming with other agenda because we do not ask you to give any money to us. We do not ask you to pat us on the back. We don't come to you and ask you to do anything for us. That's why we come to you preaching the word of God to you. The pure word of God. I want you to understand that. Because we don't understand that. I say, yes, yeah, sin. Well, sin, we all are sinners. And we're going to be sinning forever anyway. No. Jesus come, he came into this world to save you from your sin. As a matter of fact, I want to read that verse. Because I want to make sure. The, the, the background of this message is understood because we want to deal with how sin arrived in our life. Because people all used to behave, people behave as if I'm surprised I'm sinning. No, 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 no. Something happened. Sin doesn't just come like that. Something happened. You have a part to play into. We'll look into it in a minute. But I want to make sure I read you Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. The title of the passage in my Bible says the birth of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21 from verse, verse 18 it says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Meaning the birth of Jesus Christ came like this. He's about to explain to us how Jesus, the birth of Jesus came about. He said, When as his mother Mary was a spouse, was engaged to Joseph, before they came together, Meaning they didn't have sex. I don't want to get into all that. It was a Virgin Mary. A Virgin Mary. That's what Mary was. She was a Virgin Mary. She never knew a man. She was pregnant by the Holy Spirit. I don't want to get into all that right now. I'm just getting to verse 21. Then verse 19. Then uh, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. That's what I'm saying. It wasn't a conception. It wasn't sex that brought the, 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 the uh, Mary pregnant with Jesus. Verse 19, then Joseph, well, let me go to verse 20, but while he thought on this thing, that was Joseph, Joseph was engaged to Mary, and all of a sudden Mary is pregnant, Joseph never had sex with, with Mary before, and Mary got pregnant, Joseph was thinking what to do, this is strange, if Joseph tell people they're going to kill Mary, at that time that's what happened, if you commit sin like that, they'll kill you, they'll study you to death. Joseph was thinking, verse 20 says, but, but while Joseph thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, David, fear not to take unto you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. That's the angel talking. Remember, the angel appeared into Joseph in a dream. And verse 21, And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, which means Savior. For, what is, what, how can we replace the word for? Because. We can replace the word for with because. Because he shall save his people from their sins. He shall save his people from their sin. That's the goal of Jesus, to save from sin. Healing, miracle, a wife, a husband, houses, money, and all that. They are secondary, you have to know that. So now, I established the background for you, that sin. I'm going to preach a message on that one day. Okay. So, but at least you understand now the sin, Jesus came to save us from sin. So we cannot say we are saved we can also say we are Christians and we are not saved from sin. Sin is still having dominion over our, in our life. There's something wrong somewhere. If I say I'm saved and then I'm still sinning. Well, let me take the time and get this. To be saved, right? I have a pen in my hand here. This pen is in the water. The pen is in the water drowning like a human being in the water drowning. 
you talk about save, okay, I'm looking at the camera, the, my pen, you see my pen? It's in the water. You can see, right? My pen is in the water, drowning, about to die. It's perishing. Like somebody in the water who doesn't know how to swim, he's drowning. Do I say the pen is saved when the pen is still in the water? No. Okay, the pen came out a little bit. The leg came out. This is the bottom of the pen. The leg of the pen came out. This is a human being. The head is still in the water. The nose is still taking water. Did I, do I say the, 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 the pen is saved or the person is saved? No. Okay. Let me even say the head is out of the water. The person is still struggling. Oh, blue, 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 blue. Drinking water. The person is still in the water. He can, he can swim. Remember, he can swim. He's drowning. He's perishing. The person had it coming out, going back. Blue, 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 drinking water. Can I say that person is saved from the water? Or that person is saved from drowning? No, I can ask. I can say, well, the person is making an effort to be saved. But as of right now, the person is not saved. I can only say the person is saved from drowning when the person completely come out of the water. Maybe the person is transported by helicopter. In the air, where the person lived the, the environment of, of, of the water, the water that was drowning the person, the person come, came out of it completely. That's when I would say that the person is saved. You saved my life. When I'm still in the trouble, I cannot say you saved my life. I had to completely come out of the trouble to say I'm saved. So we have to understand that. Because if you corrupt, if your mentality is corrupt about the process of being saved from sin, you will be destroyed forever. Because many people say you are saved, but you are still sinning. What does that mean, though? Jesus said he will save you. And are you saying that the death, the life of Jesus and the death of Jesus is not powerful enough to save you? Are you saying that sin is so powerful that the power of Jesus cannot overcome sin? That's why you say you are saved, but you are still committing sin? So are you saying Jesus died in vain? Are you saying Jesus is not capable of making us to overcome sin in our life? Come on, think people. Think for yourself. Because that's what people say when people say, well, you're still going to be sinning anyway, even though Jesus died for you. So you're saying the death of Jesus is not enough for us to overcome sin. A sin is from where? Whatever sin is from, that we say from, from the devil or from the world. So that thing is powerful than Jesus. Is that what we are saying? Jesus, the Bible says Jesus came to save us from sin. So if Jesus cannot save us from sin, we'll be sinning until we die. What are we doing? I didn't plan to get into all this, but I want you to understand the roots of what we are talking about. We are about to talk about sin. How sin arrived in our life. How did I get here? How do I get into sin? How did I get here in sin? That's what we want to say. But I want to make sure you understand the background. That if you say you have Jesus, but you are not saved from sin, you have not done anything. You can go to church and scream. You can shout and say, God bless you. God gave you this and that. But if you are not saved from sin, you are a you are liar. It's true. God grace bless people with all kinds of stuff. But in order for you to say that the goal of Jesus is accomplished in your life, you have to be saved from sin. This is God speaking to you, my friend. Because I didn't plan to mention Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. I didn't plan to commit this aspect of the message into all that I just said. I plan to just introduce my message and move on in James. But I'm doing this because God wants you to get it. Come back and watch the second part of this message. How did I get here? Hallelujah.